Good morning, it's Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with my good friend, Nick. Nick, thanks for having us. Good to be here, Joe, once again. We're up here at Nick's wonderful house here and uh, what a view, my gosh. I thought my view was good. He gets to see all of Malacatos and the whole valley out here, Landangi. This is a heck of a view. Yeah, we're tucked in here pretty nicely, I have to say. Got a little bit of shelter from the wind, from the mountain behind buttressed from the highway, not much going to disturb you here, except peacocks. <laughs> what more could you ask for, you know? And, and way down there, you can't see it, maybe I'll get some pictures of it. Somebody's recreated and put together an airplane in their backyard. Yeah, we should definitely get a, a shot of that because the morning that we saw that, uh, after a very late night, I told the person they were hallucinating. <laughs> and then it turns out there is a passenger jet sitting in a field down there in Malacato, so that was just hilarious. Yeah, they have a, uh, a, a local drink here that's fermented. If you drink that, you see airplanes in people's backyards. Apparently, well, in this case, it's there. Is that called punta? Is that yes, that's the, that's the word for it, punta. Punta, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty stout drink. Well, Nick here has been raising peacocks for a while here in Ecuador, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, raising peacocks in Ecuador. Nick, how long have you been raising peacocks here? I think the first breeding pair arrived here in about 2011. Oh, so that's 12, yeah. going on 12 years now. Wow. And uh, of course, I mean, it was just one of those, like most of these things, just a, a random kind of, uh, why wouldn't you get peacocks in a place like this, you know? Uh, and so uh, the first breeding pair arrived from uh, a, ra a ranch in Catamayo, actually. Uh, from the family Hidalgo, a uh, famous family here in uh, Ecuador. And uh, from there, um, uh, there was a lot of learning to be done uh, on the fly uh, because, you know, I'd never obviously had anything to do with that uh, kind of thing before. And uh, it turns out that these peacocks, uh, they really like it here. Um, they've got, this valley is uh, very protected. It's got a little creek running through the bottom of it. Uh, and apart from a few neighbors' dogs and the occasional fox, uh, which we literally caught one of uh, in the chicken coop that used to be down there, um, the peacocks have a very protected life. Uh, so they can raise their young uh, during that first six to eight weeks of uh, vulnerability pretty well. Uh, and once the chicks can fly, once we call them the pea babies, once the pea babies can fly, uh, which is usually about between four and eight weeks after they're born, uh, they can get up onto the rooftops uh, and out of any danger anyway. Uh, so uh, the original two, I think the peak of the madness uh, here was 17. Wow. And that was about a year ago. Uh, and then I thought, uh, this is getting a little bit off the hook um, because uh, for those who don't know, uh, peacocks are loud. <laughs> peacocks can be very, very loud. And uh, it's good in some ways, and uh, it can be kind of a, a pain in the ass in other ways. Um, for example, sometimes I'm doing voiceover work, uh, and it doesn't matter what sort of soundproof room you have, uh, the, the noise is coming through, and you've just got to push stop and go back and do it again. Um, but in other ways, it's been the, what, what they do is very cool. Uh, they're like sentinels. Not many people know that either. Uh, they sit up in the old growth trees around the houses here and during the night uh, there's a kind of a pattern, a noise pattern and a sound and a, a movement pattern, uh, the wind rustling at a certain level and, and if anything breaks that pattern, so maybe if someone comes up behind your house or something like that, the peacocks go off like a five alarm siren. Uh, and so I'm so attuned after, after 12 years of dealing with these, uh, these creatures uh, I'm very much attuned to their sounds and what they do and how they behave. And so if anything steps out of that pattern, I know about it pretty quickly. So I, I heard one of the females screaming over here a while ago, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, well, they, I mean, as soon as, as soon as people arrive at the property with the big metal gate that you guys came through up top, uh, that sound immediately, and I'm not actually sure because obviously that happens every now and then, I'm not sure whether that's because they really don't like the sound <laughs> because it's a bit of a grating uh, sound when that gate moves or whether it's just because, okay, that's enough out of the pattern that we have to uh, 
Something set, out, set ourselves off and let Nick know that somebody's, uh, somebody's coming into the property. They go right into full commando. Oh, mode. no, they're absolutely, uh, yeah, it's, it's very much Allah Akbar, you know, yeah. uh, coming down from And they, it's funny because sometimes the valley's full of mist uh, and it's really kind of mist and, you know, foggy and you hear this, ah! and it's like almost like you've got a pterodactyl coming down from the, you can just imagine a pterodactyl sort of soaring down oh. onto the house so they make some really funny noises um other things that people don't know about peacocks are, are kind of cool as well um i found a d during the research that i was doing for uh finding out about peacocks there's a um i found a particular mythical image and i'll i'll find it you can put it in the video because it's really Great. something uh and it's a it's one of those ancient indian mythological images artists rendering of and it's got the peacock in all its glory uh, with his tail with his fan spread out and if you look at the bottom of the picture he's got his foot actually on on holding down a king cobra and uh, if you know the power of both of those animals in Indian mythology people think the king cobra is the king but the peacock is the king yeah um, the peacocks will not tolerate snakes on their domain at all, uh, which is another thing that I found out. They, will, they are fearless. They will chase off anything that they don't want on their domain. And as it's happened, I mean, I hadn't seen that many snakes anyway over the years, um, but I haven't seen a one uh, since the peacocks arrived. Uh, so, and obviously the more peacocks there are, uh, at the moment I have only seven, uh, four males and three females, but that's quite enough, uh, trust me. Because uh, once the fit, once the the males go into full on mating and showing off mode, they fight, they chase the other males away, they chase the females around. It's uh, it's a full on it's a full on show. Um, but uh, obviously, the more peacocks there are, the greater their range is, and the more ground they cover in terms of keeping snakes uh, off the property. So that was kind of like uh, I'm not that bothered about snakes anyway, being from Australia. I grew up with that sort of thing, but uh, but yeah, better to know that they're not that there's a, a low likelihood of having a, a snake right up near the house. So um, I would imagine they get after mice and rats too, huh? Uh, they 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 are carnivores. They eat meat. Yeah. Peacocks. Um, I mean, I don't feed them meat as a habit. Uh, perhaps a bit of self-preservation in there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I generally feed them uh, maize. Uh, which is ground maize, uh, which you can easily get at the uh, the supply stores here. Uh, sliced up cabbage, uh, rice. They love to eat cooked rice, uh, and any just about anything green. Uh, broccoli. Uh, I, they'll, they'll eat bananas as well. For some reason, they turn their nose up at apple. I don't know why. Uh, you just can chuck anything out there, and if they like it, they'll eat it. Uh, and if they don't, they won't. They're, they're, you know, even chickens, everything is, they're pretty smart about what they're supposed to be eating. If you watch my dogs on our place, they'll go around and eat the leaves off the medicinal plants. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how I know things are medicinal. I can watch my dogs and I can go research the plant and I find out, oh yeah, that's a medicinal plant. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny how some, I used to, as I said before, I used to have chickens and eventually it came down to um, a choice between keeping the chickens on as well as having the peacocks or uh, losing uh, one of them and the, the chickens lost that battle. Uh, because the peacocks are kind of aristocratic, you know, they, they, they seem to think that if you put the food out there, they can have a little bit now and they maybe come back for a bit more later. Uh, if you have chickens, that's not happening. The chickens are like my old neighbors here used to describe them as the Taliban. Basically, they're like terrorists. They come in and they grab everything all at once and they take it and they make a big mess and uh, there's nothing left for the peacocks. So uh, eventually I decided that buying my eggs was a price that I was willing to pay for not having the chickens and not having the commotion uh, on the property. So it's been, it's been a real trip. Um, there are a few things you need to, uh, you learn along the way, which are a few sad things happened. Um, when the babies are babies, they're, they're following around the mother uh, for the first four to six weeks uh, and thereafter. Um, but they're very vulnerable. They're vulnerable to snakes. They're vulnerable to probably one chuckers. I'm not sure if those things eat uh, baby chickens, but uh, definitely foxes or anything like that, any kind of predator. But they're also vulnerable, more vulnerable actually, as it turns out, to water. 
Uh, there's a canal that runs along the back of the house here and in the first, the first ones that got born, they were born up on the bank there and they fell in the canal and mm. they drowned. Yeah. Um, even when I used to have uh, a bowl of water uh, out here, uh, like a small pond, um, one of them fell in there and I came back and I saw the mother just kind of looking at the baby and then looking at me and wondering what was wrong and it was just heartbreaking. So you have to keep them away from the water uh, if possible uh, and just hope that they make it to the age to, when they're able to fly because once they can get up to the roof, they're, they're, they're on their way. There's a, I think, a learning curve with all sorts of animals, you know, goats, sheep, etc. <clears throat> we have to learn, um, you know, what to do, what not to do. And, um, you know, part of that is there's, there's death on the farm. It's part of nature. Yep. It, it really is. So let me ask Nick, when they have their babies, you just kind of let them have the eggs wherever? Well, what happens is that you realize that one of the peahens has disappeared. Uh, and you realize it pretty quickly because every few days while she's sitting on those eggs, she, can't st she has to stay on those eggs pretty much for 28 days. Uh, and obviously she can't do that without eating and drinking something. Uh, so you see one of the females come into the feeding area very agitated, panic. You can almost see, got to get back to my eggs, got to get back to my eggs. You know, that kind of uh, frenetic uh, behavior and she's making a lot of noise, she's really agitated and she's eating as fast as she can. And then what I do is I track her, <laughs> I follow her back to where she's going uh, to get back to the eggs. And often that's the only way that I'll even know uh, where those eggs are. Not that I can do anything about it anyway, it's not like I can move them or make, you know, but sometimes I can make the area around it a little bit safer, a little bit more hidden. Uh, so that predators are less likely to just get in there straight off the bat. And when they're sitting on those eggs, believe me, they find a place that makes that they're almost invisible. I've walked past a, a, a peahen on eggs on the property multiple times and haven't seen her because she just blends into the earth so well and she's just sitting there completely still. Uh, so they're remarkable animals. Um, they have a perceptual acuity, which is almost uh, telepathic. Uh, sometimes I'm uh, looking, if I, if I know they're outside, and then I look through the crack in the door, and I haven't made a sound. I'm just there in socks in the house, and I just stick my head, and they're all, it's not like the peacock notices me looking through the gap and then returns my gaze. That peacock was already looking exactly where my eye contact came through the door. Uh -huh. And uh, they are just super uh, aware and they're hypersensory animals, basically. Sorry about my coughing today. I've um, been sucking smoke from the fires for the last couple of days, so I got a little congestion from that. Um, so on the peacocks, would you say that they like to forage through the tall grass and do they scratch like a hen or? Well, yeah, they, they forage. Um, another weird thing that you just reminded me of uh, about the peacocks, uh, with the first pair that were here, um, when peacocks get agitated or panicked, and they can get panicked by a few things, they can get panicked by noise, but most often they get panicked by wind. And the wind swirling through, especially now where we are in the rainy season, if they get agitated and they jump out of one of the trees that they're in, they can get hit by the wind and then panic. And the first one ended up flying, you won't see it in this shot, but we'll probably get it in the, in the, uh, in the video, over to that, flew across this valley and landed on the roof of that house. Oh, wow. Over there. And that was a big panic for me. I'd spent half the day over there looking for that peacock and I didn't find it. And I was sat and I just thought, that's it. The peacock dream is already over because that was the breeding pair, you know. Um, and then, <clears throat> at about just before sun, the sun went down, I was sitting just here, actually, looking to see if there's going to be any sign. And then I heard a rustling in the, in the grass down here. And that was when I discovered that peacocks, if they fly somewhere in, in a panic, they don't fly back, they walk back. <laughs> so this guy has walked from this house down through there, found his way down through the other uh, kinta here, up through the, the, the uh, production field there and then all the way back up and he just and he was just and I, and I nearly cried I was just like what are you doing <laughs> and he's made his he's made his way back so that's what happens <clears throat> you're just they, on a walkabout 
<laughs> he would, no, but they, they, they panic. They don't like to fly long distance. They do it when they're in a panic. Uh, so once they're wherever they are, they can call out and the other one calls. And so they know which direction they, to come back to. But they walk it. <laughs> so go figure. Who would, have, who would have known? Yeah. So all these, cr all these crazy things you find out about peacocks on the, on the go. And I had one other uh, funny story. I, I always, I've got a guest house over here and I always tell the guests uh, that they need to either keep the doors closed uh, and, you know, prefer, preferably have the wind coming in through, have the breeze coming through the windows. But sometimes they don't, you know, the, the guests do whatever, whatever they want. And then the peacock wanders into their house and they have a, they panic. I just say, look, if the peacock comes in, just call me, okay? Because I know what's going to happen if they go near it. If the thing's going to start flying around and feathers and noise and chaos. And that's happened a, a couple of times because the guests, uh, you know, let the peacock into their house. <laughs> so, uh, peacock knowledge there. <clears throat> um, peacocks. So they're they're great for like a guard animal warning you when people are coming on the property like a guinea hen would mm -hmm. and um, they're great for kind of having around for the beauty are they uh, personable animals they attach themselves to you uh <clears throat> they get they get used to you uh so the original uh guy who we'll get a shot of in this video at some point um, he, he used to be, this was his domain, this balcony. They choose their domain area. The males all have to have their own little section where they can do their little dance and show off and attract the females there. And they guard that area. So a couple of times when I was working out, out here, I was maybe doing sit-ups or, or something. Uh, and I'm a bit, I'm on the ground. I'm a bit lower. I'm a bit more vulnerable. Suddenly I'm getting attacked by, uh, uh Harry, my the original guy because uh he's thinking i'm in his space and this is his time to you know they go into like a season when their tail's in full and the, the females are coming around they get a bit antsy and so suddenly I'm, I'm i'm coming up for the and there's this peacock coming at me like this i'm like hey <laughs> uh so yeah all sorts of adventures on this balcony uh with the peacocks uh there's it's that they're they're a fantastic uh animal uh some people aren't, aren't that fond of them <clears throat> um you have to put up with some peacock shit. So you have to do a bit of cleaning up every now and then if you want them anywhere near the houses, which is obviously lo lovely to have. My girlfriend, Liz, she's not, <laughs> she's not really a great fan of the, uh, of the, of the peacocks, uh, <clears throat> but she puts up with them obviously because of me. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, that's, that's a, there's, a, there's never a dull moment, put it that way, with the peacocks roaming around and getting up to their mischief. In fact, uh, one of my <clears throat> old neighbors, around uh was was growing <laughs> i don't know if i can say this actually was growing some medicinal plants uh on the property and uh was very disturbed to come back one day from from loha and find that my peacocks have eaten her medicinal plants <laughs> so, the pe so the peacocks like a good time <laughs> as well they don't mind a good time they're having a laid back <laughs> afternoon <laughs> yeah so the predators in this area <clears throat> Nick mentioned the uh wanchaco which is uh, possum in the U.S. We would call that a possum or opossum, depending on which yeah. part of the U.S. you're from. And so we have some foxes in this area, neighborhood dogs, anything else that's, they seem to get along with your cat okay, huh? Yeah, there's, I mean, really here, uh, not much in the way of predator uh, animals. Uh, as you, just what you've said, the sna I mean, obviously snakes are a, a risk for baby, baby uh, peacocks. Uh, one chuckers, foxes, okay, neighborhood, no neighborhood dogs. The, yeah, maybe a bird of prey, but we don't have many of those. We have yeah. those. The ones that look like birds of prey here are usually carrion birds. Still beautiful to watch them glide past, but they're not going to attack something uh, that isn't dead. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, they, but, uh, the, but the peacocks, once they're full grown, nothing's messing with them. Uh, the, a neighborhood dog is, a big dog is the only thing that's going to, intimidate them and they'll fly up onto the roof other than that they'll they'll chase snakes they'll chase my cats around they're they're kind of boss animals you know yeah <clears throat> so nick vasey he's our uh, local uh, uh australian real estate agent um peacock expert you know i got a joke since I, you, me and you just reminded me of something here. you just reminded me of something else pretty funny actually part of the research when i was doing it back in the day I was Googling about peacocks and what have you, and this article about 
Hunter S. Thompson because then I found out that Hunter, Hunter liked peacocks, having peacocks on his property. And then, so there was this article featuring the whole Hunter thing, but the title of the article is Keeping Peacocks a Sign of Insanity <laughs> or a Sign of Mental Illness or something like that. Oh, yeah. And I just, and unfortunately I didn't save that article. I should have saved, cop, co copied and pasted it and kept it. But uh, I was like just laughing, thinking, okay, so now I'm this madman on the mountain with a, with a squadron of peacocks, you know. Uh, but yeah, brilliant. Uh, so Santiago's here with us today. He's behind the camera. So it reminds me that I, I got to come up with a joke for this. A, a Peruvian, an Australian, and a Texan walk into a bar. Somebody fill in the punchline for us there. <laughs> I'll look forward to seeing what that's coming back with. <laughs> All right, well, Nick, thanks so much for uh, educating us on peacocks. They are such beautiful birds. Um, they really maybe are. you'll consider getting one when you move to Ecuador and reach out Anybody to Anybody who guy. needs to know anything about peacocks, uh, there's not a lot that I don't know about them uh, by this point. So feel free to shoot me questions. Cheers, people. All right, well, thanks to everyone for joining us today. Appreciate all your comments, your subscribes. Come back and see us on the next one. Ciao. Mm -hmm.